guys and welcome back to our channel. Um, it's been a little bit since we've been able to post a video, but this week we are back and we are talking about sexual harassment. I'm going to go into some examples and definitions as well as share some personal experiences and just touch a little bit on my high school culture just because I feel like that would sadly be relatable to a few people and also go over some stories that were submitted by some of our followers on Instagram who wanted to share their stories of sexual harassment. So let's go ahead and get into it. So I'm going to start by defining sexual harassment. I'm using the definition from the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission. This is unwelcome sexual advances, requests for sexual favors, and other verbal or physical conduct of a sexual nature when one submission of such conduct is either explicitly or implicitly a term or condition of an individual's employment. Two, submission to or rejection of such conduct by an individual is used as a basis for employment decisions affecting such individual or such conduct has the purpose or effect of unreasonably interfering with an individual's work performance or creating an intimidating, hostile, or offensive working environment. So this definition is really kind of geared towards more like work environments, but we're gonna kind of go into some examples of sexual harassment and you can kind of see that these things would also be prevalent in school situations as well. So sexual harassment can include many things. This could be verbal, nonverbal, or even physical. Um, an example of this is a coworker consistently pressuring you for a date, being catcalled, um, touching another employee like without their consent or really unnecessarily, giving like really personal gifts, um, telling sexual stories or sexual innuendos, especially when you know that they make someone uncomfortable. I know a common thing that you might think of in the media would be that office episode where Michael sends out inappropriate emails. That's an example of sexual harassment. Even just referring to an adult as like a hunk, a doll, a babe, um, like a sweetheart, honey, things like that. Making comments about someone's body, um, blocking someone's path, following them. Anything like this is an example of sexual harassment and kind of things that you have been able to like see consistently in media and stuff like that, but maybe not know that this is considered sexual harassment. So to better understand sexual harassment, um, I think it's important that we go over some certain terminology. So sexism is an attitude. It's an attitude of a person's sex that is superior to another sex. Discrimination is a behavior. So you're acting on this sexism. Sexual harassment is also a behavior. And like we said, it's unwelcome behavior of a sexual nature. But then there's also subtle sexual harassment. It's a behavior, but not necessarily like a legal term. An example of this is quid pro quo harassment. Basically, this is when someone's employment or dependent on something is basically based on their acceptance or rejection of unwelcome sexual behavior. So this can create something called a hostile work environment. So this is created by unwelcome sexual behavior or behavior directed at an employee because of that employee's sex that is offensive, hostile, and or intimidating and that adversely affects the employee's ability to do their job. So like the example I used earlier um, in the sexual harassment episode of The Office, it's seen as a comedy joke and a skit, but you can obviously see that a lot of the female members of the staff were uncomfortable by jokes made or uncomfortable by the email sent. Even though sexual harassment has been like a commonplace thing and pretty prevalent for years and years, it's really kind of come into the light in the past couple of years, just with like instances of the Me Too movement where actresses and actors have come out against other actors and actresses and said, you know what, I felt like this job was dependent on this sexual favor or this person who was my boss at the time put me in this uncomfortable situation and expected sexual favors from me. So even though it's been around, I feel like we're just kind of now hearing about it. And going along with that, I feel like you kind of look back on TV shows you watched thought were hilarious five, 10 years ago, and now you look back and you're like, oh my gosh, that was sexual harassment. So an example I have of this is if anyone out there has seen the TV show New Girl, there is a Christmas episode where a male is the only male in his department, and every year he has to dress up as sexy Santa. And he's required to literally basically wear like boxer shorts and let women sit on his lap the whole night. And the whole episode is like played for laughs and it's a joke, but if you were to reverse those situations, you can imagine how messed up that would be. So why is it not messed up? Cause he's a male and why is it played for um, jokes? An example of this is actually a female sexually harassing a male. Um, I don't know if you guys remember that Friends episode where Rachel starts to sleep with her assistant, but um, before that, you know, she makes comments she basically only hires him too because of how he looks so putting him in a position where it's an uncomfortable work environment 
even if he doesn't like necessarily realize it at the time, um, he was much younger than her. He was her underlying, and he was kind of in a position where if he said no, his job could be dependent on it. In an effort to combat sexual harassment and sex-based discrimination, um, Title IX was passed in the year 1972 under an education amendment. This is stating that no person in the United States shall, on the basis of sex, be excluded from participation in, be denied the benefits of, or be subjected to discrimination under any education program or activity receiving federal financial assistance. Now, when you think of Title IX, you almost always think of colleges and like going through the Title IX investigations and stuff as compared to legal stuff, but Title IX also is implemented in high school. You know how they don't let you be discriminated against like if a female wanted to be on the football team. This is the act and the amendment that protects that right. So now after talking about Title IX, we're gonna kind of move from more workplace sexual harassment to school sexual harassment. I think that it's really important for me personally to share my experience of sexual harassment. And if I'm being completely honest, I had no clue that these were experiences of sexual harassment until I started working with rape counselors a couple of years ago. Um, in my high school, it was a very common place for boys to put their hands down girls' front pockets on their shirts and call it pocket rape. Um, this was normalized. This was something the teacher saw. This was something that everyone knew about, and you just kind of either got away from them or it happened to you and everyone laughed. And if you were trying to say something or were rude about it, you would literally get called a prude or get told that, you know, it's just a joke. Don't take it so seriously. Um, Growing up, this didn't seem like an issue to me. It just seemed like, okay, I know that there were teachers who saw it. I know that they knew it wasn't okay, but nothing was ever done about it. And I think that goes a lot to say about um, the kind of environment that we create in high schools where it's just uncomfortable to call people out or you don't want to embarrass the boys or the girls who are doing these things, so you just don't say anything about it. I also had um, experiences where I would have just my butt grabbed in the hallways. I remember once... Um, my entire homeroom was taking a picture and one of my very close guy friends thought it was funny like in between the pictures to alternate between grabbing my breasts and grabbing my butt just in between the pictures. Um, I'm sure if I tried hard enough now I could go back and find those pictures and you can even see in the pictures I'm laughing about it. But looking back I think that that was kind of like a defense mechanism for me not to get embarrassed and for me to pretend it was okay because he was my friend and I didn't want to make a big deal about it. I didn't want to be that girl who wasn't funny. I didn't want to be that girl who wasn't cool and called boys out. Um, I think honestly we were just socially conditioned not to make a big deal about it, to not let it affect you. I've had other girls and myself experience um, instances of boys like throwing stuff down um, your tops, like just throwing pieces of paper down your tops. I've also seen instances when girls would throw paper and guys would throw paper down um, other people's pants if like their pants were low and their butt was exposed. Um, it was just really us not realizing that we had rights over our bodies and that our bodies were ours and our bodies were ours to make decisions over. Um, I think because this wasn't taught to us and I also think that just again socially we were just conditioned to let things like this happen as to not embarrass the other person and not call them out. And again, like I said, the teachers saw it, the teachers let it happen. So I think it was really a combination of the environment, everything going on, and being told, you know, that it was normalized and it was okay. And I think Melissa Sawyer actually said this in one of our videos and it was a really good quote. We don't want it to, just because it's a prevalent thing, we don't want it to seem more normalized. So, um, I encourage anyone out there who's in high school who's had experiences like this, stand up, tell them that that rape joke isn't funny, tell them that touching someone else's body is not funny. Um, you have the rights to that and it's, it's not okay, it's not funny, it's not cool. If you can't make jokes about other things, then you're just not funny. So call them out, um, be that change in your school and even if you're not in high school and you're older, be that change, stop those jokes, be better, be different. So now I'm going to share with you guys some stories that individuals submitted on our Instagram story um, of their experience of sexual assault that they wanted to share anonymously. The first story starts like this. I was in class in high school. This guy who I had previously hooked up with was in the same class as me. I had a boyfriend at the time and he knew that. I made it clear I wasn't interested in him. He kept making unwanted sexual comments towards me. I told him to stop. He then started stroking my leg with his finger repeatedly during class after telling him to stop. To this day, he still tries to add me on every social media even though I keep blocking him. My memory is a little fuzzy on this event because I tried to block it out that badly. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the second story. I remember going to work every day and wondering if it would be a simple statement or it would be physical this time. 
I was a manager of a restaurant and would get sexually harassed and assaulted by one of the cooks every day. It would be for phrases such as, those pants look good on you, baby girl, to him grabbing my butt as I'd walk by or grabbing me by the waist and pulling me towards him. I dealt with this every day. When I confronted my boss about the situation, it was always ignored and never dealt with. My boss would say he doesn't mean anything by it well or well if he didn't flirt back. I constantly watched my actions after that and tried to avoid it coming off as flirtatious without also making the cook mad as I was scared I would get in trouble if I did. I was in constant fear of wondering if I would accidentally say the wrong thing that would push him to go further or do something threatening. My boss never took any actions in my favor and I was working in an environment where boys will be boys was just as common as would you like a table or booth. So the third story I shared was me and one other girl had been told on two separate occasions by an extremely aggressive coworker that he could rape you after making derogatory comments on our appearance. The comments were reported to our higher ups and though many were outraged, we were told they couldn't fire him because he hadn't committed three punishable offenses. Some of our other coworkers would crack jokes about the comments and say that we were overreacting and that the guy who made the comments just had a big mouth. Even one of our adult bosses said that maybe he didn't mean it that way and that her son would sometimes use language like that when he was playing video games with his friends. We were extremely upset by the whole situation, but we're sure he wouldn't be rehired the next year as this was a seasonal job. To our surprise, he was rehired the next year and didn't seem to face any real consequences to his actions. I had to spend the majority of the summer avoiding him. He was finally fired because he didn't show up to two shifts in a row, which goes to show what the company prioritized. Okay, so the last couple of stories are um, stories that happened in high school, so I'm going to kind of paraphrase them. The first one was um, an individual was walking to class in high school and a random guy grabbed her butt. They didn't know what to do and they were embarrassed. Um, and they said that they were wearing a really cute outfit that day and felt good about their appearance, but after that, that they no longer felt cute. The last story I have is an individual shared that when they were in high school, they would have a um, male member of their class go to the bathroom, take a picture of his genitalia, and then send it out to all the girls and would walk in just to see all of their reactions at the end. I want to thank every single person who shared their story of sexual harassment with us. First of all, I want you to know that you didn't do anything to deserve that sexual harassment. That was completely on the perpetrators of the sexual harassment. I want you to know that you were seen and you were heard and that even if it was an instance that you saw as insignificant or not that big of a deal, it still matters and it still is an example of sexual harassment. Um, thank you so much for sharing your stories and thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope that after this you kind of look into yourself and question your own actions in situations where you might have been sexually harassing someone without even knowing it. Um, and I also encourage you to talk to people, to let people know, to speak up when you feel that something's not right. Be that active bystander in your community and make a change. Thank you guys so much and I'll see you in a couple of weeks.